I've only built a couple of ITX gaming PCs up to this point, but this one has me seriously rethinking, like honestly, my entire life. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is my new personal ITX gaming and editing PC, and someone better call Optimum Tech because I may wipe my entire YouTube upload schedule and do ITX builds like he does from here on out. In all seriousness, Optimum Tech was a huge inspiration for me making this build, especially with all of his content on this case specifically, and I can't wait to show you what's all inside of it. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about this Baller AF gaming PC. Of course, we're gonna benchmark the absolute heck out of it, but all of that though after a quick word from today's sponsor. Big thanks to ASRock for sponsoring this video and specifically the brand new Z590 Extreme Wi-Fi 6E motherboard. This board supports both 10th and 11th gen Intel CPUs and I definitely could have gone with this for my build today if I didn't choose the ITX route. As the name suggests, the Extreme Wi-Fi motherboard is rocking Wi-Fi 6E technology which extends to the new 6 gigahertz spectrum band providing baller internet speeds and even lower latency so you can land the headshots like I did at the end of the video. It's also packing a Dragon 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD slot, a graphics card holder that connects right on the motherboard itself to prevent GPU sagging, and it's even sporting a flexible integrated I.O. shield for those weird cases that don't sometimes fit the I.O. shields just quite right. Grab your Z590 Extreme Wi-Fi today by clicking that first link down in the description. All right, so jumping straight into the parts list, I want to start with the case because like I said, Optimum Tech really inspired me to use this and I gotta show it off. This is the Cooler Master NR2 200p and literally every YouTube video you'll find of this is overwhelmingly positive. Seriously, absolutely everyone is in love with this case and I'm not gonna lie, it was a little sus at first, but when I was assembling this build on my Twitch live stream, I quickly understood what all the hype was about. And yeah, by the way, I stream all my gaming PC builds over on twitch.tv slash and if you wanna get in on that fitty bitty committee, you should probably check those streams out. But yeah, whenever I was cable managing inside this case and adding part by part, it was just super smooth and easy and I felt that the case was just working alongside of me rather than fighting me every step of the way and the process was just super quick and I've literally never felt this way about a case before. The NR200P is the $100 version that includes the tempered glass side panel and a vertical GPU riser cable. There's also the $80 version which doesn't have either and it still looks dope just as an FYI. I could honestly talk about this case for hours and hours. It was just super easy to build in and ITX builds are supposed to challenge you with them being super cramped and everything but this process just went super super smoothly like I said and it's actually motivating me to build more ITX builds in the future stay tuned. All right, we gotta move on though. Next up is the CPU, and this here is the Intel Core i9-10850K, and this CPU has been dropping in price what feels like every single day. This is a 10 core and 20 threaded chip, which is perfect for video editing in Adobe Premiere, which is my main use case, and it has a max turbo frequency of 5.2 gigahertz right out of the box. The motherboard that it's plugged into may raise an eyebrow or two, but let me explain myself. This is simply just the Gigabyte Aorus H470 Pro AX, and the reason I got this one is because it's much cheaper than any Z490 ITX motherboards on the market right now. I understand it may look a little weird pairing this high end of a build with just an H470 motherboard, but honestly, I don't need to overclock my 10 core and 20 threaded chip that boosts up to 5.2 gigahertz out of the box already, so why would I waste money on features that I'm personally not gonna use? I think this is a good reminder that you guys are allowed to go against the grain a little bit with your own builds. Don't be afraid to do something a bit out of the ordinary just because it isn't meta, and I'm very happy that I saved the amount of money that I did with this cheaper but still very capable motherboard. Next up is the RAM and big thanks to Corsair for hooking me up with this one. This is their LPX white kit, specifically this 2 by 16 gigabyte pack which is clocked at 3200 megahertz and 32 gigabytes is absolutely perfect for my video editing workflow. Corsair also kindly sent out one of the SSDs, my main boot drive, and that's the MP400 one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive. These MP400s have some serious scalability as they go all the way up to 8 terabytes if that's something you're interested in. On the back of the motherboard, I also have a separate NVMe drive specifically just for video editing. You get way better performance when you don't edit off your native boot drive. And this is a one terabyte SK Hynix Gold P31 NVMe drive. Moving along, we got even more help from Corsair. Seriously, Corsair, thank you for helping me out on my personal ITX build. And they also sent over this power supply and that's the SF750 SFX. ITX power supplies are crazy expensive right now. So to be honest, I'm just very grateful I didn't have to pay for this one. And I think we all know by now that you can definitely trust the Corsair SF 
product line for ITX builds. Next up, we get to cooling and huge thank you to Be Quiet for hooking us up with this AIO so we don't have to hear about the AIO positioning from the vultures here on YouTube. We all now know that you don't want the pump to be the highest point in your loop. You would still be fine, but that'll lower its lifespan. And with a case like this, you don't have that many options. Because I got the tempered glass side panel, I could only mount my AIO in the bottom, meaning that the CPU is up at the top and that's normally where the pump is. But with this Be Quiet Pure Loop 240, the pump is actually halfway up the tubes, meaning that we're good to go. Not only that, but we're about to see in the benchmarking section that the Pure Loop 240 definitely kept my 10 core CPU very nice and chilly. And once again, huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending this out ASAP so I can make this video. Next up, we have a single RGB strip and this I actually recently just installed. This is the Fantex Neon RGB light and this here is my personal favorite part of the entire system. Instead of those cheap and flat RGB strips where you can see every individual light, this light strip from Fantex is super diffused and it's in the vertical orientation and it just looks so clean wrapping around the AIO. I'm absolutely in love with this RGB strip. It also matches the RGB in the GPU and that's indeed the last part we need to talk about. This here is the EVGA for the win RTX 3070 and shout out to Oscar in our ZTT Discord server for buying this one just as a normal consumer and then sending it over my way after I paid him for it just for the record. The ZTT Discord server is linked down in the description but don't ask Oscar to buy you a GPU that's my GPU hookup. With that being said, here's what the final parts list for my personal ITX gaming and streaming PC is looking like. And yeah, this is definitely a pretty expensive build, but 100% worth it in my opinion. Not only do I edit a ton of videos off this system from home, but I also do the occasional gaming on it. And that leads us right into the gaming benchmark section. Starting with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War here in 1440p and high settings with ray tracing turned off. Mind you, I got 198 frames per second. I don't have a secondary weapon. I guess I'll have to use a sniper. Oh, sit down, baby. You sit down, and you sit down. And you sit down. Everyone sit down. Best sniper tech tuber in the game. Little on fire, watch out. Next up was Valheim because I'm still loving this game and in 1440p with the absolute max settings, I only got 80 FPS, but I definitely could tweak this a bit to get that number higher and actually take advantage of my 144 Hertz monitor at home. Next up was Assassin's Creed Valhalla and using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1440p with high settings, I got a 65 frames per second average. Rainbow Six Siege followed up after that and in 1440p with ultra settings, using the benchmarking tool, I got an obnoxious 291 FPS. Borderlands 3 was next to really crank out that GPU and in 1440p with ultra settings, I got 82 FPS. CSGO followed up next. Honestly, I don't really need to benchmark this easy of a game with a system like this, but I did anyway. And in 1440p with pro settings, I got 378 FPS. Should we do another montage? Yeah, I think so. Let's get it. Sit down. So many FPS with this one. It's just too easy. Too easy! Next up was Rogue Company, and in 1440p with ultra settings, including that 150 FPS cap, I got right under that at 148. Everyone's favorite Fortnite followed, still owning and getting kills left and right during these benchmarking runs for this title, and in 1440p with pro settings, I got a stupid 388 FPS average. Sit down. And for the last gaming benchmark, we have Valorant, and in 1440p with high settings, I got an impressive 272 average FPS. Last game of the day is Valorant. I think we're gonna make Make this a good one, you mother. I'm gonna go off in this game. I can, I can just feel it. I'm feeling deadly with this mouse, man. I'm, I'm feeling real deadly. Don't peek the leaderboard, though. I'm only in second place right now. About to be in first place. I'm telling you, we're coming. Oh, man. 
Ooh, that one probably hurt too. And that one, man, I'm dishing out, I'm dishing out dimes. And for the last benchmark, we have 3D Mark Time Spite, and I'm very happy to show and kind of flex that my new personal build here cranked out a massive score of 12,810. Once again, huge thank you to Optimum Tech for the inspiration for this build, and also to Corsair and Be Quiet for helping us out with some of these parts. If you're in the mood to see yet another high-end gaming PC build guide video, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.